Hi, Archie Rick here. It's morning on the homestead. I'd like to welcome you to Archie Homesteader YouTube channel. And uh, we're out this morning. We're just uh, walking around here a little bit on the homestead and going to discuss with you uh, how you can do this as well. It's not that hard. You just got to make up your mind to do it. Uh, my wife and I started homesteading back in 2006 and uh, we bought some land earlier and uh, we bought it on land contract or land owner financing, some people call it. Um, that basically is, you don't go through a bank, um, you make a small down payment sometimes, sometimes you don't. It just depends on the landowner. Uh, usually they'll want a small down payment to show that you are interested in it and that you're serious about purchasing the property. Um, my wife and I have done this several times. Um, we uh, have bought several properties through the years this way and uh, We've purchased them through land contract, and uh, we eventually sold them for a profit. Uh, each time we did it, we made a little more money, and we were able to reinvest it into other things. A lot of folks starting out at homesteading uh, don't know where to start, maybe don't have enough money. Sometimes banks are hesitant on uh, lending you money, and, um, you know, they... Uh, they feel it's quite a risk, just uh, property alone. Anyway, what we did was uh, we found five acres in the Ozark Mountains in Arkansas. Uh, found it through a friend that uh, happened to be a member of a club that I was in. And uh, he told me, he says, you know, uh, I sell property all the time, land contract. And uh, he says, I'd be interested in showing you some and see if there's some you like. Anyway, we uh, found this five acres it was a wooded uh, acreage, as you can see around me, and uh, there was nothing on it. This was in about 2005. And uh, we ended up making a deal with the guy, put a small down payment on it, and uh, we began making payments on it. We financed it for 15 years, very small monthly payments. And um, anyway, we... Uh, eventually uh, sold our place in suburbia and uh, made a little money on it and we used that money to invest into a 29 foot camper and we pulled the camper onto the property and uh, lived in that we were both working uh, she was a realtor and I was a construction manager and we lived in that trailer for a little over a year well my son and myself built the house and uh, as we were developing the land uh, the first thing we came upon was a um, problem that we came upon uh, was our bathroom was way too small and we didn't have any kind of a uh, laundry and uh, so anyway my wife was going into town to uh, use the laundromat is about seven miles away seven eight miles away and while she was using the laundromat one day uh, there was a oh there was an old fellow there that was uh, didn't have a lot going for him you know kind of a drifter was sitting inside the place and while she was tending to her clothing he stole her basket and um, her coat so I was kind of concerned about that so I asked her uh, you know hey, how about let's just build a bathroom uh, laundry here in a small building and uh, you know that way you won't have to go into town anymore so anyway we uh, I built a 10 by 10 shed I put it right on top of the water we have rural water here water here and we also have electricity uh, so we had the basic utilities so uh, I built this building on top of the where the water line came into the property. And uh, 
I put in a uh, washer, dryer, a hot water tank, a shower, and a composting toilet. And the building was heated, we insulated it, and the building was heated with electricity. And I just had a little tiny uh, box heater in there and we had plenty of heat. So uh, that was a major improvement for us. Uh, our bathroom in the camper was so tiny and uh, we were able to wash clothes, take hot showers, and go to the bathroom if we had to. And uh, we used that until we got the house built, and then eventually we closed it down, and it's just now, it's a garden shed. But uh, the property we moved on to really had no restrictions other than they inspected um, any kind of plumbing or sewage. So we put our own septic system in, had it inspected, and uh, they came in and inspected the rough plumbing. And uh, other than that, there was no electrical or building inspection. However, I, I've been in construction all my life, so I knew how to do it. I built houses for years. But um, we finally got into the house. And uh, that was it took a little over a year, and my son came in from out of state and uh, he helped me build it. And uh, while he was here, he, uh, he decided to move to Arkansas. So now he lives here with his family. But uh, we're pretty self-sustainable, not completely, but we're getting, we're getting there. Um, I retired about two years ago and uh, my wife is retired, <coughs> excuse me, also. And uh, we, uh, we live off of uh, a small income and we make a little extra off the farm. We raise chickens and we raise goats and we raise a little bit of cattle. And uh, that brings in a little income and some food. And we garden intensively. Um, I have a small sawmill that I purchased back in when we first bought the land. And I was able to uh, harvest many of the trees, and build the buildings that we now have on the property. So uh, that's kind of the story that I have, how we started out. Um, it's an ongoing process. We've been doing it since about 2005, 2006. Uh, from that, up to that point, we lived in, in the city. And we always wanted to move out to the country, and we finally made that move. Um, I'm going to kind of show you some uh, things on the farm now. Keep this in mind. We it took us uh, it's 2017 now, so it took us a while to build all this stuff, and we did it in stages as we had the money. And uh, a lot of this is built with recycled products, uh, lumber off the sawmill, and um, you know we just uh, live our life here. We're happy. And uh, you can be too. Uh, you can do what you've always dreamed of. It's not that hard, you just gotta do it. You folks that have children, you can do it. The kids will just love it. There's all kinds of things for them to do in the country. And um, I think it uh, makes them a little more wholesome as they grow up in this situation. Uh, I see kids every day just attached to games and computers and you know, electronics and not that that's not a good thing but some of the kids just don't experience uh, life as it's meant to be moving out into the country and having a homestead helps you do that and uh, i notice the kids that do do that uh, are more wholesome and they understand life they understand life and death with animals and you know, it's just the birthing of an animal and, and uh, the harvesting of them for food. And it's just uh, different things that they will experience that they wouldn't do in a city. Anyway, I'm going to turn the camera here a little bit. And uh, we'll uh, let you see some of the homestead. This is our garden. We're just starting it. It's May 24th today, and we use the back to Eden method. Uh, the reason we do is um, we used to garden normally, you know, where you just till the ground and uh, 
plant your seed and plants and let it grow and it always did good I've always been a pretty good gardener but uh, the problem here in Arkansas we've been experiencing extremely hot and dry summers sometimes it goes two months or longer without water now we harvest rainwater and we also um, uh, you know put the wood chips on to the garden and uh, this is the first year we've done it this way and I hope to have pretty good results. I've already noticed the plants are taking off really good and uh, I think it's because there's so much moisture being held in underneath the wood chips. If you look over here you'll see the swimming pool where I harvest, uh, I save the rainwater that comes off that building. There's a long pipe that comes from the building and it catches the rainwater and it empties into the pool. There's about 5,000 gallons of water there. And uh, the pool looks a little crooked. I know I didn't get it too level, but it works. It's been that way for years. And over here is a little building we keep the goats in. Out there in the field, if you look, you'll see several goats there in the woods and out in the field. This is our corn crib. I built that uh, out of uh, lumber that I harvested off the property. And uh, we grow some corn and we uh, pick it and dry it in there and we use it for feed for the animals. Right here, this is the sawmill I was talking about, and it's kind of under construction. We've been, uh, it's been developing uh, <laughs> in stages, but it's, uh, it's become very useful for extra income and also making uh, all the lumber that um, you see the building itself made out of. I've got logs laying all over the property. And then there's a couple buildings there. That building there is the uh, original bathroom laundry that we had when we were living in the camper. And uh, it's now just a garden shed, but it was very useful at the time. This is a small barn, pardon the junk all over the place. That's part of having a homestead. You got stuff everywhere. But uh, in the background there, there's a chicken coop. And over here's our house that we built. And uh, it's about 1,300 square feet. It's, uh, it's still under construction. We'd like to build addition in the back. Haven't done that yet, just started the foundation recently. But uh, it's coming along. I see I got a shingle that come off the roof from the windstorm we had. But uh, the building back there with the tarp over it, that's the woodshed, we keep our firewood in it. And then the building to the left of that is, uh, <coughs> is a, uh, a building that uh, I built for my son to live in when we first moved here in the camping trailer. We didn't have any place really for him to stay, so I built that building and made a little bedroom and place for him to stay. And he lived in that for a year until he finally got his own pl place down the road. Um, you know, we're, we live a happy life here. I'm not gonna tell you everything's perfect. We have problems just like everybody else, but uh, we deal with them one at a time. And uh, we grow a lot of what we eat, we can. Um, I uh, sell a little bit of lumber that I cut on the sawmill, and uh, you know we we're getting by. We like it. This is uh, leftovers from the lumber mill, sawmill, and I'll cut that all in the firewood, and that's how we heat our house. Our house is 95% uh, heated with uh, wood, and um, we do have electric heat in the house. But we, uh, we don't use it that much. It's just kind of a backup. And uh, we're not uh, 
off the grid. Uh, I don't know if we ever will be, but we've learned to um, use as little electricity as possible. And uh, we don't have a very high electric bill. Uh, it very, very rarely, if ever, tops $100 a month. And when I lived in Ohio, our electric bill used to be $300 a month. Um, you know, we, we're, we're going to develop solar here, and that should help on that. That should cut that uh, electric bill down a bit. But, uh, you know, a little bit at a time. And like I said, we've been doing this since about 2005. Started out with nothing on the property, just the camper, and then it just expanded from there. As we worked, we build a building here, build a building there, you know. I had the sawmill from the beginning, so it helped me uh, with the lumber and the materials. And uh, because of that, we were able to uh, save a lot of money on lumber and that kind of thing. Anyway, that's sort of our story. Uh, we hope to uh, make many videos for you folks and share our experience with you and uh, give you more details on things that we do around here. Uh, we hunt, we butcher our own meat and uh, we uh, raise our own eggs and vegetables and can and there's a lot of things we like to do and uh, we want to share some of these with you. Uh, I think that's it for right now. I'm going to say goodbye and I'll be seeing you again soon. Bye bye.